Uh, not to brag, but I've been eating food my whole life, and I thought I'd make a video going over all the types of food in the world I can think of with a brief description. Uh, if your country isn't mentioned, don't feel bad, you just should have invented sushi or pizza. French. Uh, interestingly, while highly acclaimed for their restaurants, it's a well-known fact that French people themselves don't actually eat anything, surviving solely on tiny cups of espresso and the feeling of superiority. Uh, you can identify if you're eating French food when you literally can't enjoy the meal because your brain is always doing the calculus of whether it was worth the money. Uh, Japanese. I love Japanese, and admittedly, I think sushi in particular is the perfect date food. Uh, light, delicious, and I can demonstrate my high-quality hunter-gatherer genes through adroit chopstick handling and being able to swallow whole nigiri with zero gag reflex. Another excellent Japanese food is ramen, which is the ultimate min-max dish. It's either two days of cooking chicken, pork, and fish in perfect balance and temperature, three days making a cured egg, a lifetime of mastering the oils and toppings ratio, and then pairing it with the ideal noodle texture. Or it's opening the package and eating the spicy brick. Uh, Mexican. Mexican food, as it's known by us pigmentally challenged folk, is when you fry anything and serve it with chipotle mayo on a flour tortilla. Uh, I also know the word salsa, which is the Mexican word for homemade ketchup. Italian. Uh, there are currently three known Italian foods. Pasta, pizza, and gelato. We hope that one day science may discover more. Spanish. Uh, Spanish food is basically the circus version of other food. Uh, chorizo is a spicy hot dog. Churro is a deconstructed chocolate donut. Sangria is party wine. Paella is fried rice jumbo shrimp edition. And gazpacho is what the try-hard kid in your home ec class comes up with when you ask for Mexican ketchup. Greek. When I think of Greek food, I think of small amounts of tasty things being baked in thin pastry and then cut into geometric shapes. Spanakopita, bugatza, bunch of things I can't pronounce, and baklava, which are tasty honey nut diamonds. And you might be thinking, um, excuse me, baklava is actually Turkish. But that doesn't fit the thin pastry narrative, so here we are. American. American food is often known in the United States as food, and it's characterized by extremely large portion sizes, both in the food you're being served and in the guy barbecuing it. All American food is designed to be eaten with two hands, but real patriots do it with one. Hot dog, hamburger, rack of ribs, crawfish broil, BLT, turkey leg, lobster po' boy, chicken wings, Philly cheesesteak, Chicago deep dish. If a nice black lady calls you sweetie and you're suddenly wearing Crocs and a bowling shirt, it's definitely American food. Canadian. Uh, you've heard of potatoes and gravy. You've heard of cheesy potatoes. But here comes the remix. And that's what we've contributed in the last 150 years. You're welcome, ladies and gentlemen. British. British cuisine is modeled after the food your eight-year-old nephew comes up with when he asks if he can cook you dinner. Black pudding, beans on toast, toast sandwich, toad in the hole, mushy peas, jelly deals, peanut butter and jelly sandwich, but he ran out of bread and used clotted cream instead of peanut butter. Luckily for my nephew, he's a member of the Commonwealth. You know I'd do anything for the Queen. German. Uh, one of my favorite German foods is a good old lager beer, which they serve in great excess at Oktoberfest, a famous festival that Germany holds every, you guessed it, September. Other classic German foods involve taking delicious classics and making them a weird shape. Take, for example, wide chicken, beef rollington, and of course, twisty bagel. Chinese. Chinese food actually has no proper name in English and can only be communicated through the number next to it on the menu. Thankfully, Chinese food has thrived in Western countries despite everyone thinking it was bad to eat MSG and raw pangolin for literally no reason. Indian. Indian cuisine is rich in heritage and incredibly diverse. Uh, most Indian restaurants have such expansive menus, it can take minutes to find and order the butter chicken. Uh, another Indian staple is naan, or what Westerners call, Oh, puffy tortilla. To be honest, I don't actually know the difference. Middle Eastern. Uh, when I think of Middle Eastern food, I think of shawarma, which I do often because there are literally no kebab places in my whole city. For those unfamiliar, kebab is the international cuisine of it's 3 a.m. and the clubs are closed. While I'm not sure how authentic it is when the guy puts french fries in it, you know I'm not complaining. There's also other great Middle Eastern bangers like tzatziki and hummus that are also best eaten drunk and alone with a spoon. Now you might be saying, um, excuse me, tzatziki is actually Greek. Well, okay, buddy, if you think you can claim this one too, then your ego's more inflated than Turkey's currency, so quit bickering or else no one gets tzatziki. Scandinavian Nordic. Uh, frankly, the only Scandinavian restaurant I've ever heard of is Ikea. And while the Swedish meatballs are pretty good, I'm also not so sure about the authenticity. Cause like, if you look at the recipe, it says beef, pork, breadcrumbs, a couple egg yolks. And you're like, mm, that sounds like a regular meatball. So after that, I was like, okay, so what is Scandinavian food? So I looked it up and I got Steak and mushrooms, pancakes, and that was pretty sus, so I decided to really go in, and then I found stuff like ragmunk and tumbarola, 
Which, like, I'm not gonna lie, I'd eat a hot dog in any form, but if you guys want to go international, you might want to consider some rebranding. Like, <laughs> just imagining, like, at the United Nations meeting, it's lunchtime, and the Italian guy takes out a slice of pizza, the, the German guy takes out a beer and a pretzel, <laughs> and then the Swedish guy takes out his lunch bag and thinks to himself, they're going to be so jealous. <laughs> <clears throat> uh, Eastern European. When I think of Eastern European cuisine, I think of three words. Babushka, potatoes, and poverty. And as someone with Irish ancestry, that definitely comes off as a hard flex. Thankfully, instead of grandmas and potatoes, at least I get capitalism and cultural appropriation. Exactly how I like it. Australian. Australian cuisine is the most white bread food in the world. Breakfast. Vegemite on white bread. Lunch. Sausage on white bread. Dinner? Meat pie. Dessert? Hundreds and thousands on white bread. They do admittedly have absolutely fantastic fish and chips because they can walk 100 meters to the beach, scoop Dory up from the barrier reef, and flash fire right in front of her family that's already forgotten about her. I also give a shout out to Pavlova, which might possibly be from New Zealand, but my mom makes it and she likes it when I put her in the videos. Vietnamese. Vietnamese food can be identified by the restaurant being named after some type of pun involving the word pho. Pho sure, pho ever, pho true, pho you, etc. But in reality, the word is actually pronounced pho, as in pho did. <laughs> Guys, I waited four years for that one. Sorry. Latin American. Latin American food is great because so much of it is fried. Empanada, fried hot pocket. Plantains? No, you fool, it's not a banana, it's a potato in disguise, and you fry this bad boy twice. Regular banana, also fried. Besides that, the only other Latin American food I know is ayahuasca. Uh, I know about ayahuasca for two reasons. A, I live on the West Coast, and B, I've listened to Joe Rogan, and my name is Jamie. African food. Korean food. The most well-known Korean foods are kimchi and Korean barbecue. Korean barbecue is usually a buffet-style restaurant where you get to cook everything yourself on a little tabletop barbecue, while kimchi is the name I call the chairman of North Korea when I pinch his fat little cheeks. Now, at this point, you're probably saying, Oh no, there's 30 seconds of the video left and he hasn't said my country. But unfortunately, this isn't the local weather report birthday shout-out, so I can't get everyone. If it makes you feel any better, you can scroll down and read all the comments that are like, <laughs> that video was funny and accurate. Except for that one part you said about my country was completely wrong and now I'm angry. And to them I say, quit bickering or no one gets tzatziki. Oh my god, I forgot Thai. I forgot every country that Jimmy's from. Oh shit, I also forgot Native American. Oh no, that's not a country, we took it. <laughs>